Welcome to the Minute Masters, and today I'm going to show you guys how to replace your entire fuel pump assembly. Now, for most of you, this is going to start by you basically either removing your entire truck bed or you're going to have to drain your fuel tank, drop it, and then install that fuel pump. Now, you're talking a couple hours more work than what I'm about to show you. So I have this super handy dandy hatch that I have multiple videos on and how to make this and everything. So for me, I'm gonna cut out about, I don't know, half a day's work in about maybe 45 seconds here. And I have instant access to my fuel pump. Just for the haters, I've had this for a while. No rust. So we're at this point. If you are gonna follow this route, cut a hole and everything, this is where it really starts to get a little bit more interesting. So newer fuel pumps like this one don't typically come with the same pin connector that the original fuel pump came with. So you'll notice here, this is actually a fuel pump I replaced eight years ago, that I actually had to take this whip that comes with your new pump and I actually had to solder everything into place. So we'll cover that in a little bit. So before we start disassembling everything, we're gonna have to depressurize the fuel system. So over here on the passenger side kick panel, you're gonna wanna remove it. So you just grab this little thing and I'm, you can get it with your hands if you wanna use a removal tool, fine. And then this panel, shift it up. There we go and then out it comes. Now I had to shift it up because you wanna get it out of those push clips right here. And you can remove these with your removal tool, put them back and then put this back in later just by pushing it on. So what we're looking for is this switch right here. So basically if you're in a car accident, the flip switches kills your fuel system. So we're basically gonna simulate that by putting your screwdriver right underneath that little red plunger and you'll see it kind of kick up there. So now we've disconnected the uh, fuel system. And you're gonna go over here. And you're basically gonna try to start. And then you're set. At this point, go under your hood, disconnect the battery, because if you're gonna solder that harness, you don't want it connected. So we're back at the bed. We're looking down through our fuel pump access hatch and the first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the wiring harness. So just like that, easy peasy. There's a little tab right there that you could press down. Just kind of leave that up and out of the way. Then you have your two fuel lines. So you have your return and you have basically your feed to your engine. They have these safety clips here. So you get a little screwdriver in there, pry them off. There we go. Now one is bigger than the other. So that should keep you from getting them confused. Don't mind the Raptor liner that I sprayed on here. There you go. So both of those are off. Now, if you haven't done it already, you better subscribe to this video because good stuff going on here. Lots more to come. So Ford has these special disconnect tools to undo their fuel lines. And so essentially you'll sort through your pack of them and you'll find the one that fits. So. And you kind of, if you saw what I did there, you insert it up there, kind of move it around a little bit, and then it's a push and then like a pull. And then there you go. Notice no fuel came squirting out of there. And that shows that we've um, depressurized the system. Now there is gonna be fuel that's gonna wanna spill out. So I do have these handy dandy absorbent cloths. That's kind of what we're gonna do right there. Um, another thing I recommend just to kind of keep it out of the way, you could take a little clip Clip it over to the side, then it's kind of out of your way. All right, last one here. So this may take a larger size, but we're gonna try it with this one. Let's see, Let's see if our blue does a trick. There we go. So we do a little push and then a little bit of a pull and there we go. So at this point, everything's disconnected to the fuel pump. Now it's time to basically undo it. So now I'm gonna give you two different scenarios here. I have a plastic fuel tank here. So I've upgraded from the traditional steel one. If you have a steel tank, 
you actually will have this lock ring and that lock ring would kind of be just like so. And so what I recommend is you take a punch and a hammer and you'd basically hit these kind of crown pieces and you'd turn it. So you go punch, punch, turn it, punch, punch, turn it. And then it would come right off. At that point, you're in the clear. So just so you can look at that, it also has a gasket. You don't want to get these things messed up. Because I have a plastic fuel tank, it has all these little mounting tabs. And so I'm going to have to go through each one and spin them out there. So Milwaukee extension, my favorite Malco bits. If you're into like HVAC and some other kind of technical things, great thing. You can swap it around for different sizes. So anyway, I'm going to undo all those, pull the pump out. All right, there you go, guys. I've unscrewed all the little retaining clips. Um, pro tip, keep a vacuum handy. As I was unscrewing these, there's a little bit of dirt that I've collected around the rim. You don't want that in your fuel tank. So as you can see, there is gasoline pretty much right up to the lip. Wasn't enough to spill out, but to me, this is your worst case scenario for a failed fuel pump. You have a full tank, and now you're forced to basically drain the tank somehow, okay? Sounds tedious, but if you got the hole, not tedious anymore. So time to lift this bad boy out of there and place it off to the side. So I have one of my absorbent claws right there. Now it's kind of a awkward little business here cause it's kind of a weird shape, but essentially you get most of it out. Then you have your pickup down there. And I'm just gonna kind of tug on it a little bit. There we go. And then there we go. Now just be mindful, there will be fuel in this. You can see it's kind of dripping. All right, Put that right there. So I'm replacing this because this little guy right here and what it's attached to isn't functioning properly. And my gas gauge isn't reading well, especially when it gets down here uh, when the tank is on the empty side. So eight years later, I'm having to open it up and clean everything out. So benefits of having this hatch all those years. So goes without saying, you wanna clean this up, get this edge all pretty again. Now for this fuel tank, if you have gone the plastic route, it does come with its own gasket. So you'll have to make sure you recover that from your other pump. Again, make sure it's nice and clean because you'll have to reapply it. All right, I got everything cleaned. I even took the, the existing gasket, kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Um, I'd watch with these if you're using a cleaner. You don't know what that cleaner will do to the rubber. Um, I know the rubber is supposed to keep out gas, so I use a little gas, kind of wipe to clean. So now, time to put it in. So you want to take your fuel sender and you kind of stick that in first. And then the other thing is I want to get that end down there and then push. See that? After that, it's a piece of cake. You just kind of let it sink itself right there into the fuel. Put your wires in there. Wow. Can you believe it? We're here. So then you're just gonna to wanna to orient these because if you remember, we kind of undid them and they were roughly this direction, let's call it, okay? The other thing um, as you're inserting this, sometimes it's worthwhile to just make sure that your fuel level sender, that float, is in a good position. So this is kind of the high tank, the high part of the tank. And I know the thing is gonna go like this. So you do want it to orient in that direction, but kind of just how I had it here, that's how you want it. Okay, so now for those of you that have a steel tank, now's your time to take your lock ring, bring down your lock ring, and then you just tap, 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 and you're there. Now for those of you with the plastic tank, time to screw all of your tabs in. So I'm gonna do that, and we'll come back. All right, so I've gone through the somewhat uh, lengthy process to put all these tabs in there. It's not really that lengthy, but it's certainly a little bit slower than putting the lock ring on. And so we're gonna go and connect our fuel lines so even easier to get back on, you just slide them right on, just like that. And you might hear a little click. 
and then you really know you're in there. And then you get your safety clips here, press them down on there. So that's one. And let's see, ooh, this one's gonna, ooh. There we go, and that's two. So that way, even if you don't get that good solid click, you know that they're gonna stay on there. So for me, this part's pretty easy. I've already been through this process. I've already soldered on the new tab. So for me, it's a quick plug and play. Now for you guys, your pump will come with this little whip here. And if you follow some of the wiring instructions in there, you can figure out how to basically put it all together. Now, for those of you that kind of want a bit of a cheat sheet, I'll show you right now. So you better have a pen and pad handy, or you can keep re-watching my video. That way you have another chance to subscribe to my channel. But essentially, your solid black wire will go to this orange wire right there. And then you have a black wire on here with a white stripe down it. And that will connect to this black wire here on the original harness. There is this kind of, I don't want to call it like a gray wire. Gray wire on this side will connect to a red wire on the truck. And then your last wire is this kind of purple and your purple wire connects to a black wire with a white stripe on the original harness. So if you got all that, I just simplified this for you because if I remember, it took me a while to figure it out. So basically make your solder connections, be sure that nothing hot lands on your gas. And when you're done, connect that bad boy up and that's it. Um, this little nub right here, if you find a spot on your frame, like a little hole, just clip it right in there and that will keep your harness put. So time to close up this hatch and guess what guys, you have changed a fuel pump in your truck in absolute record time. Like I said, it would take about four hours to go take your bed off or drop your tank and all that other stuff and headache. I've literally just done this in very little time. So here on out, close up your thing, make sure you go inside the cab and you press down on that uh, switch that we popped up. And I'll tell you, you'll be cruising in no time. See ya.